Welcome to Margot Dreams of Baking. Today I'm going to show you how to make the softest, fluffiest dinner rolls. Stick around. This bread roll recipe has been adapted from a recipe of my husband's grandmother's. We have these about every holiday meal and they are soft, fluffy, and delicious. I'm including both volume measurements and weight measurements in this recipe, but I recommend if you can to measure by weight so that you get the most accurate results. To begin with, I'll just go over all of the ingredients that are in the recipe because I'll be dividing them up as I go. I have 420 grams or three cups of bread flour, 240 grams or one cup of whole milk that I've taken a portion out for another part of the recipe two large eggs, 82 grams or six tablespoons of unsalted butter that I've melted, nine grams or two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast, 10 grams or one and a half teaspoons of salt, and 50 grams or a quarter cup of granulated sugar. To start with my recipe, I'm going to make a tang zhang, which is where you cook a portion of the flour and a portion of the milk, which helps to lock in the moisture and make for a fluffier bun. For my tang zhang, I have 23 grams or about three tablespoons of flour and 113 grams or just under half a cup of milk in a medium saucepan. I'm going to heat that up over medium heat and whisk it until it gets thick. You'll notice I switched to a spatula halfway through because then it doesn't get stuck in the, the whisk. It's now thick, so I'm going to put it in my mixing bowl and let it cool until it's just warm to the touch. While I was cooking my tang zhang and letting it cool, I added my yeast to the rest of my milk that I heated to lukewarm. If you have the kind of yeast that doesn't need to be bloomed in advance, then you can just add it straight to the bowl without heating it in the milk, but I happen to have the kind that I need to bloom right now. So now that my tang zhang has cooled down, I put it into the bowl of my stand mixer and I've added the rest of my flour, the sugar, and the salt, and I'm going to add my liquid ingredients now. So to that, I add my two eggs. You don't need to whisk them in advance, the mixer will do it for you. My melted butter. and my yeast and milk mixture. Of course, if you don't have a stand mixer, you can do it by hand. It's just a lot easier with the stand mixer. So now I'm just going to start mixing the ingredients together until they come together as a ball. And I'll do that at about a stir or a speed two on my stand mixer. Okay, my mixture has now come together. So at this point, if you're making the bread by hand, you would pour it out onto the counter and start kneading it by hand until the gluten is well developed. I'm going to increase my mixer speed now to speed four to get my gluten nice and developed. And I want it to get to the point where it makes a window and I'll show you in the camera how that looks. It's been about seven or eight minutes since I had my stand mixer running and you can see how smooth my dough looks now. And when I pull it, you can stretch it and you can it gets see-through but it doesn't break. That's when I know it's ready. So that was about eight minutes in the stand mixer. By hand, it would be at least 10 minutes. So what I'm gonna do now is I have, I've prepared another clean bowl that I sprayed with some baking spray. And I'm just going to transfer the dough into that bowl, cover it, and let it rise in a warm spot until it's doubled in size. And that's gonna be about one to two hours. My dough has been rising for about two hours and it's now doubled in size. So I'm ready to divide it into buns. Okay. 
You can see how soft this dough is. It's going to make for a nice fluffy bun. So what I'm gonna do is divide it first into 12 portions. And I want buns that are about between 71 and 72 grams in weight to make sure that they're equal size. So I'll divide it into the 12 and then I'll weigh to make sure that they're the right size. Now that I've got my dough divided, I'm going to again divide them into two pieces and this makes them nice and easy to pull apart when you eat them. So I'll just, this one I don't have to be as accurate with because it's all going into the same bun. I'll just divide it in half and make two little balls and then those balls I'm putting into the muffin tins. I do like to smooth the top as I'm putting it in and that just makes sure that the top is nice and smooth on the bun. So my dough is now divided into 12 portions and then two portions each from there and put into my greased muffin tin. And now I'm going to cover them and let them rise until they puff out above the muffin tin, which is about 30 minutes to an hour. They do end up looking a little bit like butts. In fact, I've heard them referred to as butt buns before. So if you don't like that look, you can divide them into three balls each and you get more of a clover leaf style. But this style, then you're able to just pull it apart and put your butter in the middle. And uh, it's, it's great for that as a dinner roll. So here I go. I'm going to put it in my warm environment for about 30 minutes to an hour. And I'll show you what they look like when they're puffed up. It's been just about an hour and my buns have risen nicely. So now I'm going to put them in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or about 200 degrees Celsius for 10 to 12 minutes until they're nice and golden. And in the meantime, I'm going to melt two tablespoons of butter to brush over top after they're baked. I'm choosing this time to use salted butter, but unsalted butter is fine as well. It's been 12 minutes and my buns are baked. They're lovely and risen and golden brown on top. So the last step is to brush some butter over the top. This is gonna add flavor and help make them soft on top. And that's it. Now all I need to do is just to let them cool down a bit until they're cool enough to handle. I'll wait about 10 minutes and then they're good to eat. My rolls have cooled down enough for me to take them out of the tin and it's time to try one. You can see how easily they just pull apart. Usually I put some butter on them, but I didn't get it out for the video, so I'm going to taste it as is. Mm. They are so soft and fluffy. They, they're, they're spongy inside, really moist, and the salted butter on top gives a really great added additional bit of salt and flavor to these buns. They are so delicious, not very hard to make. I hope you try them. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. I will be publishing new videos every week.